Hey, welcome to another Blender video, and today I'll just be going over my general workflow for creating the sci-fi market scene. So to get started, let's jump straight into Blender, and let's select these and press X to delete the light and the default cube. I'll also go to the Render Properties tab and change the Render Engine to Cycles. So when working with bigger scenes like this, I like to start off by blocking off where I'm planning to place the main buildings with some simple shapes. First, I'll press Shift A, and under Meshes, add in a plane, and press S50 to scale it up by 50. This will be our ground. To start adding buildings, press Shift A and add in a cube and scale it up so the size is more accurate. To scale the first building, select the cube and hit Tab to go into edit mode. Here press A to make sure all the faces are selected, and press SZ to scale the building down on the Z axis, and then let's do SX to scale the building up on the X axis. Let's hit Tab again to go back to object mode, and with the cube selected, let's press Shift D and X to duplicate the cube and move it on the X axis. The space between these two buildings will be the main road. I'll duplicate this building once again and press RZ90 to rotate the building 90 degrees. Then I'll move this building to the background to create an intersection. Before we move on with adding more buildings, let's place the camera first so we won't have to worry about parts of the market that won't be in the camera's view. To first change the resolution, let's head over to the Output Properties tab, and I'll change my resolution to 2048 by 1080 but depending on the computer that you're using, you may want to lower those values to speed up your render times. Press N to show the side panel, and under View, enable Lock Camera to View. Now when you go into Camera View by pressing 0 on the numpad, you should be able to move the camera with the mouse. I'll position the camera so that the building on the left is the focal point. I'll be tweaking the camera position throughout this video, but the general area will remain the same. To create sidewalks, we can just duplicate the buildings we created, slightly scale them up, and then scale them down on the Z-axis. Now we can place these at the base of the buildings that we created to make our sidewalks. Let's populate the foreground as well by placing some buildings close to the camera to add some depth to the scene. To further emphasize this perspective, adding objects that can act as leading lines, which guide the viewer's eyes from the foreground to the background, can really help. The road between the building already acts as a leading line, but I also like to add some bridges that connect the buildings. I'll add a couple bridges that connect the foreground to the midground, but also some horizontal bridges to add more foreground detail and guide the viewer's eyes. We'll populate the scene with smaller details such as cars and street signs later on, so once you have the base objects for you to build the scene upon, you can move on to the next step. We can start making these cubes look more like buildings by beveling some of the shapes. Let's select the first building, go into edit mode, and on the top left, change over from face select to edge select mode. Select the edge that's facing the camera and press Ctrl B to bevel this edge. Now in the bottom left menu, let's increase the number of segments so the building is rounded. For adding more details, we'll be using Loop Tools, which is a built-in add-on. So to activate this add-on, let's go to Edit, Preferences, and under the Add-on section, search for Loop Tools and click the checkbox. I want to add an entrance at this corner of the building, so to do so, I'll start by adding cuts where I want this entrance to be. Let's select the Loop Cut tool on the left menu and add a horizontal cut to the building. Then let's add two vertical cuts on either side of the corner. You can make sure that these are evenly spaced by having the same factor offset for both cuts. With the middle faces selected, right-click and extrude the faces along normals into the building. We can use Loop Tools to flatten these faces by right-clicking and under Loop Tools, select Flatten. Then we can add a loop cut close to the entrance of the building to set the wall thickness, and start moving and extruding the faces inside. Before adding more interior details, let's work on the exterior. Let's inset the top face and extrude it up. I want to add a second floor, so I'll add some space for a walkway and continue to inset scale and extrude these top faces to create some quick variety. I also want to make the building longer, so I'll go into edit mode, enable transparency, and from the top view, select these faces and move them along the x-axis. We can continue to add details by insetting and extruding faces. I'll bevel the edges of some of the sidewalks as well to match the building, and bevel this edge on the building on the right as well. I'll continue to slightly change the camera position and the building locations as I go forward. I want to keep the entrance of the left building as the focal point, so I'll position the roads, bridges, and buildings to lead the viewer's attention to the focal point as well as create some depth. For the lighting in the scene, I want to be a little more selective of where the light is shining, so instead of a HDRI, I'll place a plane behind the scene and give it a blue tint to act as the sky. 
If you're looking to create something that looks less stylized and more realistic, an HDRI environment texture would probably be the way to go. So right in front of the sky plane we just created, I'll add two large area lights. One to light up the sky with the orange yellow color, and then the other facing the scene as the main source of light. Then we can place more smaller area lights around the scene to emphasize the focal point. For the materials for the building, I'll go into the shading tab and connect the color ramp to the base color and add a musgrave texture to the factor of the color ramp. From here, we can change the values of the color ramp and the musgrave texture to add some light detail. If you're looking for a more realistic look, you could also consider using an image texture or something more complex. I'll duplicate this material and slightly change it up so I can apply this to the sidewalks and roads as well. For the roads, you can plug the musgrave texture into the roughness of the principled BSDF to create some puddles on the road. You could also do this with image textures, which is what I'll replace the musgrave texture with later on for the roads. Now that we have the base for our market, we can start adding details and props. I'll open up a new project and we can start by making some props to place around the scene. Starting with crates and boxes, we can just scale a cube in edit mode, add a bevel and some loop cuts, and start extruding faces to add some detail. We could also select the top faces in transparent mode and separate them to create a lid for these containers. I'll temporarily set the base color to a texture I got from textures.com, and I'll apply this texture to other props, but we can change this later on to better match the scene. Next I'll create a shape that could be used for scaffolding or railings. I'll add two cubes in edit mode, scale them up on the y-axis, and add three loop cuts to each cube. Then I'll select the outer faces on the bottom of the top cube, and bridge them to the inner faces of the bottom cube. Then we can add an array modifier to extend this shape. For signs, I'll just scale up a cube on the y-axis, and in edit mode, I'll inset and extrude the first face, then select all the faces and bevel the sign. For the sign textures, I'll be using some textures that I made that you could download using the link in the description of this video. So I'll give this mesh the same texture as the boxes, add a new material using the sign texture, and assign it to the front face. To create more signs, we can just duplicate this one and change it using a sign texture. For more props, like pipes, air conditioners, and vehicles, we could just download a couple textures from textures.com, import the images as planes, and start modeling the prop using the images as reference. Then we can apply the same material to the mesh and line up the edges in the UV editor. Since this is a bigger scene, I won't be adding too much detail, but spending more time with these props, using more high quality image textures, and using projection mapping techniques can make a huge difference if you're going for realism. Anyways, once you've created all your props to fill the scene, we can go back to the main scene and append all the props. From here, I'll start placing the props all around the scene, starting with the signs and railings. Once again, I'm only concerned about what's in the final render, so I won't be placing any props outside of the camera's view. As I go through the scene and add more props, I'll start adding details and lighting to the interiors of these buildings as well. To keep the focus on the main entrance of the market, I'll go to the camera settings and add some depth of field. If you feel like a certain part of the scene is empty despite the props, we can also change the building to add more windows and entrances. For the background details, I'll just use planes to create silhouettes of buildings rather than modeling them, though you can do something similar with image textures and projection mapping if you want more detail. You can grab some FBX animations for people in the market from Mixamo.com, then import and place them around the scene. Finally, to animate the cars, I'll just add some keyframes at different positions in the timeline, and there you go. I like to use this process to create some quick concept art without having to worry about spending too much time, though you could use the same process to create something more photorealistic by spending more time with the props and textures. Anyways, I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you did, it would be awesome if you could like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all next time.